welcome. My name is uh, Olivier Font and I am a lecturer at the Pompidou Centre in Paris. Located right in the centre of the capital, the Pompidou Centre is an emblematic monument of the Parisian landscape. Uh, this structure, made of metal and glass, inaugurated in 1977, has been designed by architects Renzo Piano and Richard Rogers. It has greatly surprised, even shocked, at this time. And I'm standing right in the center of the first European collection of modern and contemporary art. To be more precise, I'm standing on the fifth level of the museum where the modern collection is presented. Chronologically, we present most of the movement from the early avant-garde to the 60s, Movements such as Cubism, Abstraction, or Surrealism. Paris was an extremely attractive city at that time. Artists from all over the world, in all fields of creation, have created works that explains the richness of our collections that numbers actually more than 120,000 works. I invite you to discover five artworks chosen from the masterpieces of the modern collection. I would like to present you a work by Marc Chagall, originally a Russian painter. The couple at the Eiffel Tower, dated 1938-1939. The Eiffel Tower is definitely a symbol of uh, the passions of uh, Marc Chagall. He spent many times in Paris. Uh, the geometrical shapes, the yellow circle and the blue triangle are making echo to his friends Robert Delaunay. But uh, most of the major figures of Marc Chagall are originally from Vitebsk. The small Cheto, the Jewish community from this Belarus city, are uh, the main elements of his compositions. You can have a look at Vitebsk, just there. In 1938, Marc Chagall is extremely depressed about what he sees of the evolutions in Europe of anti-Semitism, violence. The only expectation for Chagall is that love will win. This is why he represents Bella as a bride. In his souvenir, the couple had a wonderful time under the curtain the hoopa, he expects that love will still be the future. Between the angel rising up and the angel falling down, the couple is led by the rooster that shows them the way to the light. The collections of the Pompidou Center are rich from the works of uh, Vasily Kadinsky, painter from Russia, but we work mostly in Germany. In 1911, the artist is working around Murnau in the Bayern area. He has created a group called Der Blaue Reiter, the Blue Writer, with the German artist Franz Marc. Maybe you noticed the horse just there or the horse rider just here. It's still linked with reality, but fastly the artist will forget those external references and will lead abstractions. Picture is a black arch dated 1912. Vasily Kedinsky definitely has reached pure abstraction. He doesn't refer to reality anymore and make a parallel with music long conversations and writings with Schoenberg, the musician, will make him think that there should be a synesthesia between painting and music. Colors could be like sounds, lines could be like rhythm. The major action of this arch, centrally located, is really giving an importance to all composition. Huge masses of colors are turning all around the composition making of this specific painting a specific universe. Each painting will be an element that will be a proposal for a new space. That's the inner necessity of Vasily Kadinsky. In 
1917, the year and all, Fountain, a work made by uh, Marcel Duchamp, originally a French-born artist. This is one of the most controversial artwork of the 20th century, an icon of our collections. The question is simple. Do you think it's art? Do you think it's a provocation? I guess that was the key idea developed by Marcel Duchamp when he first presented this object. If you still think it's a urinal, do you think it still got the function of a urinal? It's on a base, it's in a museum that changed everything into art. This object is not made by the artist. It's a product made in the mass consummation objects of our 20th century. The beginning of the ready-mates so popular and the beginning of the career of the artist. The original even was lost in 1917, the creation, 1964, the replica you actually see. But this is the time of the pop artists in America where they will see in Marcel Duchamp some of the reference they are asking for. This object still remains one of the most controversial art in our collections, actually. A small artwork, the frame, made by the Mexican artist Frida Kahlo and dated 1938. In 1938, André Breton, the father of surrealism, decided to make a journey to Mexico. He meet uh, Leon Trotsky, but he definitely meet the famous artist Diego Rivera in couple with Frida Kahlo. This is a surprising union. Some will say the elephant with the dove. The work of Frida Kahlo is extremely impressive for André Breton that decide to organize an exhibition in Paris in 1939. Uh, this is one of the objects in display at the specific exhibition. Frida Kahlo was extremely sensitive to his indigenous origins. In the specific frame, she used the patterns developed in the village of Jukela in the Oaxaca province from Mexico. Flowers, birds are the first elements on display painted on glass. And just behind, just like an icon, a Madonna, appears the self-portrait of uh, Frida Kahlo painted on aluminium. The art of Frida Kahlo will impress civilly. André Breton uh, that will say, a heart is just like a ribbon around a bomb. If the first personal exhibition in New York, in Levy Gallery, was extremely important and impressive for the audiences, it will not be the case in Paris. And Frida Kahlo will be extremely depressed about what she will see of the Parisian atmospheres. If it's for one thing unfortunate, our luck is to have the first and only Frida Kahlo ever bought in a European institution. In this room are installed three large blue panels painted by the Catalonia painter Joan Miro and that he realized in 1961. The triptych, blue one, blue two, and blue three, give the occasion for Joan Miro, as he's installed in his new workshop, to go over the easel painting that he usually did. The hanging on the walls of these uh, big panels allows the visitor to dive directly into the spaces developed by uh, Joan Miro. Blue has always been a fascinating color for Joan Miro. Azul, as it's said in Catalonia, was painted on the doors of the windows. He remember as a young kid that he was extremely impressed one night seeing a star that seemed to reach throughout the sky. Since that day, he said he was licking the sky, mouse watering blue, and blue became the color of his dreams. In the 20s, a long series, the dream paintings, will be very impressive for the surreal movement. 
but as most of them remain as easel paintings, he has the possibility uh, to give the dimension of infinity, universe almost, with those great creations. The time has gone by, and now the wisdom painter try with patience, just like a Japanese arrow player, to install all the details, the stones, the storms made of red in the large composition. It's a movement still, it's a music silent, but it definitely remains the eloquency of the silence. <laughs>